again guys just a follow up video from yesterday one of the comments that I've got was that the time you convert this machine to CNC using the mechanical kit and the steppers and the other electronics that you would nearly double the price so you, the price of the mill plus the same again it's probably going to be somewhere in around about the four thousand pound mark give or take a few hundred pounds for most people to do a conversion on a machine this size that's how it is unfortunately if you want a machine like this and you compare it to say a house at twenty thousand pound plus that which is a much more capable machine of course or a sile x5 or x7 again twenty thousand pounds the sile can go up to fifty two thousand pounds including that if you add all the toys on it um, if you need it that's fine if you've got the money that's even better the seeks um i actually went down to art your trade met the chap there really nice unfortunately for me the machine is a bit too small the ones that are quite popular little mini um sx2 piece they're about 750 pound which is great but they are quite a small machine the other problem with the bigger machines for that is it's harder to get a cnc kit um or information on converting it compared to the likes of this this is basically a bt30 stroke precision Matthew stroke most of the same mills of the same size for a variable speed um milling machine there's plenty of plans out there for this and very similar ones too so like i said yesterday sam at cnc for you he's converted the precision Matthews 727m and he's on his second one now he's doing a real conversion man but it's looking impressive he's getting really good results out of these then you've got uh, the fact that i was able to buy a kit for this in the uk which for me is good because i don't have to machine the, the base or grind it uh, that that's a big plus um i could have made the kit myself and that's fine but it would take a lot more time it would have been a lot less money but again that was the original thought in the first place by the plans from sam which i did and they're good plans and the warco gearhead um, mill is the, the equivalent for that um but for me, as I say, at the end of the day, it was the convenience of not having to attack this with an angle grinder or find another milling machine to use it with. Um, and it's a bolt-on kit, so that works for me. I also bought a machine that's got decent travels for me because I want to make stuff for 3D printers, including um, heated beds. And it's mainly aluminium I'm going to be working with. And the largest heated bed that I want to work with is maybe 400 millimeters square. So the travels of 560 in the y and 220 in the x that lets me do one half of the bed flip it around 180 degrees if i locate it properly and finish the other half off again it's the old story you know if you've got the space you don't need it that's fine um but if you haven't got it and then you've got to start overhanging the the bed and stuff it gets a lot more complicated it just makes it hard to work so i'm in the fortunate position where i was able to save up and buy myself this one i can put some funds towards the other parts and that's fine so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to um review the cnc for you.co.uk um mechanical kit for the retrofit conversion for this mill and um, just to be clear i'm not sponsored he's not paying me anything i've spoke to brian at length a few times in the weeks leading up to the development of this kit while i was saving some money and buying the mill um so this is entirely my opinion um i think you'll like what you see uh, if you have a mind to convert one of these machines, it gives you a good idea of uh, the, the availability of a kit from the UK. He's also doing it for the smaller machines. Um, the Amadeal, I think it is. It's, a, it's just a sort of size down from these machines. And that's looking like it's going to be a, a, a good value kit as well. That's in development as we speak. Um, so, yes, so I'll... Uh, Crack on, we'll have a look at this uh, kit and see what you think. Right then, so <clears throat> here is my initial thoughts and quick look at the uh, CNC for you uh, Warco WM18 ball screw conversion kit. Uh, the kit is made in the UK um, by CNC for you. Uh, they developed and designed it. I've had quite a number of conversations with Brian about it and they're up to buying it. So 
came well packed uh, in a couple of boxes um, a tube for the two longer ball screws and the uh, y-axis travel ball screw in the box with the other parts uh, like I say we'll take it a bit at a time I didn't bring the X no the Y and the XY and the um, z-axis ball screws in to here just now because it's a ball screw is a ball screw you get them the, the right length and they're packed the same as this so this is the y-axis ball screw as you can see threaded at the end ball screw on it doesn't feel like there's any play so all nice no machining on it either, which is good. Let's pop that back in the, the back. So I'm just going to go through this bit at a time and see what you get for your money. Um, it's nicely done, it's very functional. I think it's going to do the job nicely. I'll just pop that up there. So, all a couple of parts that we have amounts. Not including the kit that I bought them separately are uh, the couplers, I love Joyce. Sorry if it's on my head you're getting just now. I've obviously opened this and checked it before. Okay, so we have the z-axis um, bearing block for the z-axis ball screw obviously it goes on the top of the pillar or the column what i like about this is the fact that it's used fk12 bearings that are bolt in so a lot of the other kits that you see what they tend to do is they machine a pocket that's round and they press fit the bearings and that's great but at least for this if there's any issue with bearing you can just pop it out put a new one in job's a good one he supplies the additional bolts that you need and obviously you reuse the ones that are in the machine to bolt this down. Um, we had some conversations about it. Brian hasn't machined, and he states that clearly on the website, hasn't machined the surfaces that are not actually requiring to be done. Uh, it saves time and money. He doesn't have to build fixture plates for it. He doesn't have to do additional operations. And basically you're saving some money. So for example, on the back here, it's not being machined but then you're never going to see it. Once it's on the machine, it's on the machine, that's it, you know. It is nice when you get kit and you spend a significant sum of cash in it for it to be nice and shiny and all the rest of it. And that is great. But to be fair, it's a decent job on it. It's nicely done. There's a little bit of attention to detail on the corners there just to make it a little bit more interesting. But yes, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So that's the, the bend block for that. I need to check which ones these are. But these are the additional ones. I think this could be the end block for the Y. And again, he's not machined the surfaces that don't require it. It's cut to size. It hasn't run a... It's had a bit of a polish, I think. You know, it's been cut, but it's not quite. If you want to, you can scotch break that edge. I don't know how much you're going to notice that after being using this machine for a few months. Again, a little bit of a, a, a cut mark on the edges. But overall... The bar that is used to cut the end plate out of is that wide obviously and that's the, 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 the factory edge as it comes. But the machining on it's nice, while you can see the marks for the tool, you can't actually feel them. Um, yeah, so again, another nice part. i just pop these in here. What's this one? That is one of the um, bearing block mounts. Um, there is instructions as to where that goes. I suspect it's in the saddle area for the um, y-axis travel. So I think that will go in there. And again, machined out with a piece of bar right width, cut on the ends, machined, drilled and packed, supplied with the screws that you need.
again this is the um, end cover for the y-axis cap out of the, the right with the bar the saw marks then are visible but hey it's not the end of the world nicely machined on the end some little bevels on it um, all in all nice part very functional good to go so in the back set screws and locking nuts a bearing this is the the word's gone again this is the end stop bracket I believe and what they've done is they've used blocks that they use in their other conversions they do a lot of uh, router kits and everything so this is a cast by the looks of it block for the server mount and the web joy of fitting there which is fine and that's obviously going to mount onto one of the, the brackets with the two screws so again a lot of the kits that you get the machine all this for you and that's fine but I suspect that just adds an awful lot to the price all right so again happy with that it looks like a nice part it will do the trick you can if you want obviously once you've got the machine up and running redesign these and make different mounts maybe that are more enclosed if that's what you feel you need to do um, personally I'm quite happy with this at the moment I like the fact that it's basically a bolt on kit just pop that in there so that's that let's do x we'll do the y have i opened that before no i haven't opened that before give me a second now i'll get the cheap so here we go Pop that so again Locking that and send them out. They're using induction stencils rather than the um, micro switches, which I like because that way you don't get any uh, crud into the, the sensor, stopping from working. Again, one of the standard servo mounts. So that's fine. So no surprises in that. And I suspect that the Z axis, if I remember rightly, is pretty much the same. Okay, so you get the block with a piece of bar so that you can mount the induction sensor in it and that will keep that out of trouble. Right, pop that back in there. The rest of the kit Other blocks with bearings again substantial chunk of aluminium nicely machined where it is machined again it's cut to length it's not bad you could probably polish it out if you really wanted about it I say I, I do like these FK12 block inserts rather than having to uh, press fit bearings so that's good uh, it does look like there's a hard to say that thing that's been pushed yeah no there's it's a pocket that goes all the way through by the looks of it into here so that's nice so again you'll be able to get them all out if you need to with minimal fuss nice finish here is the y-axis and this is nicely done so this is using one of the standard uh, bowl uh, screw couplers and then he's machined the block specifically so it sits in the saddle that you can screw through onto which is nice with an offset apparently this was a real peg to get sorted but that's that done so that's quite nice i'm just going to 
pop that in there so we don't lose it while it's uh, out the back of the bench. And then this is the Z axis uh, mount. It does have a rather good PDF, about 27 pages full of photographs of how to put the kit together, which is useful. Um, so this goes uh, on one of these, I believe, or across a couple of these. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it goes like that, and it's used to tension this in place. But nicely machined onto one of the standard uh, bolstery mounts. Again, finish on the edge is okay. You're never going to see this once it's in the, in the pillar, you know. And mounting it is actually it looks like it's going to be quite easy. So that will be a job for uh, later on this week, I think. I'm going to put the Z axis in and then see how we go. And then I might just see about attacking the other couple of axes and get them done. So again, so that's that there. Okay. So there you go, guys. That is the kit. My first impression is that it looks like it's going to do the job nicely. Um, I like the quality of the work. Um, some people might be put off with a lack of finish on some of the edges where it's been cut but to be honest I'm inclined to agree with Brian once it's in the machine you're never actually going to notice it you know and if you're that fussy you can always polish it I'd rather polish it myself and spend another couple of hundred pounds um, there's a kit in America and um, by the time you import it you've still got to cut the machine you've still got to um, pay taxes and everything uh, in the UK for bringing it across and VAT and all sorts uh, and you know it is what it is this one at least it's made in the UK you know exactly what it's going to cost when you order it uh, it does the job that I want it to do which is the whole point it's cheaper by about £400 I reckon roughly by the time you've uh, ordered it from the the states the there's a company in the uk that are potentially going to manufacture these kits for their uh, version of mill uh, it's a gy seven six six of you know you know the, the i'm sure a lot of you if you're watching this channel will have already done some research into this and you know the popular mini mill that grizzly do and precision matthews do um that they all have a conversion kit for well, I was laughing because it's an expensive kit and this is not an easy game to get into, but the, the kit I was looking at was something like um, going to be around about £1,500 for essentially the same kit. And I'm like, no, I, that, that does get to be a little bit expensive. This wasn't cheap. This was around about the £900 mark by the time you put the VAT in. But again, I'm not having to cut my machine. The other kit, you still had to cut the machine. So yeah, ball screws come with it. All the end plates are done, the adapter plates are done um, to connect the, the, the saddle. Uh, I say the luxuries you, or the couplers you need to buy yourself and the stepper motors and everything else. Okay, so there you go, that's the kit. I'm quite happy with that. The instructions quite a big document, usual disclaimer. Don't be an idiot, it's not for children, you know, take the time. It's an Amadeo AMA25L that he's um, doing the conversion on, so that's a smaller machine. And as you can see, he's got pictures. Uh, Brian's very good, he's, he's happy to take feedback. So for example, there was a comment in here where it was, we knew that you to remove the, the Z-axis handle, but it didn't actually say also removed the Z, it just said Z-axis handle. So the implication was what you know so he's, he's happy to edit the document if it needs it things like that so again you can see here how that's going to attach on the z-axis ball screw uh, there's the plate there you can see that bar on the ball screw nut and it ten tensions up on that so i think the idea is it just applies some tension to the, the mount to stop it slipping out again so yeah so all in all uh it's a nice kit i'm looking forward to getting it done um, you don't have to take the whole bed off apparently, you can support it, which is what he's done here, uh, we'll see. But no, end of the day, nice kit, I think good value for money for me in my opinion, yours might vary, but you're getting what you paid for, it's going to do the job nicely and I'm a happy camper. 
Right guys, thank you very much. That was the bucket. Yeah. Okay, well, if you've made it this far, thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed what you saw, like and subscribe please. Uh, I could do some feedback if it's going. I'd like to know what some of the people are using for budget camera gear if you do a YouTube channel yourself. Uh, currently all my cash is going into this, which is where I want it to go. But I do appreciate that maybe a, a better camera than my phone might be a, a good idea if you're enjoying the videos. So any suggestions for that. Um, going forward, obviously, going to have to sort out the garage, make it a bit more usable. I think Aid's um, shed's in a better place than mine at the moment. He's looking quite comfy in that. I think he's got a decent chair at least. Um, review the kit, like I say. All my opinion, your mileage may vary. Uh, I think it's good value for money. Uh, see what you think, you know. Certainly worth a look. If you've got any questions, Brian's more than happy to answer them. Going forward, I'll be doing the servo, not the servos, I wish. Okay? The stepper kit that I got, um, so that's good. I still need one part of that to be able to get the machine running. And due to come a uh, situation with uh, COVID-19 and the restrictions that's placed, and that's proven to be a bit hard to get at the moment. But I've got time yet, I'm not in a dire rush, you know. Uh, any other suggestions, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take them on board. Uh, I appreciate that the sound quality is not great. The, the microphone's really sensitive, it picks up everything, and the slightest rustle, cough and breath. Um, the lights, I'm trying to reduce the flicker by adjusting the zoom. But other than that, I think, you know, it's, it's actually about the content, it's not about me, okay? So, thank you very much, like I said, like and subscribe, I'll post a link in the bottom of the uh, comments to the CNC for you guys and the kit and some of the other channels that I like to watch and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, goodbye.